Well, ain't you a sight for sore eyes. Good morning, everybody. It's Midnight and Beyond. This is a bit of a different video here today. As we all unfortunately know, the Wii Shop channel is soon to be gone for good. I'm recording this on January 28th, the day before Kingdom Hearts 3 comes out. So as one door closes, another one opens. And that has multiple meanings since Kingdom Hearts is involved, but whatever. We're not here to talk about that, we are here to look back on the Wii Shop channel and everything that it offered us because, quite honestly, because of the Wii Shop channel, I still to this day consider the Wii to be the greatest console Nintendo has ever made. I wish it was still up and running because that would make it continually a good thing for people to purchase and benefit immensely from it. Like, it's so cheap to come by these days to get an actual Wii. It Backwards compatible with the GameCube is amazing. The GameCube library is the like one of the best, if not the best, uh, library of games Nintendo's ever had. And then the Virtual Console, it let you play everything. All the key titles for Nintendo 64, uh, Super Nintendo NES was there. It was absolutely amazing. The eShop on the Wii U unfortunately didn't match up nearly as well, but uh, I'm not gonna go on a big old Wii U rant. Actually, when booting up the Wii U again and just like Refamiliarizing myself with the layout and the controller and everything like that. I gotta be honest, I was very, very pessimistic about the Switch when it first got announced and when it first came out. First off, like, I know they had to redo everything from scratch and start over and dump the Wii U because it was a complete and total commercial failure and they wanted to start fresh and they couldn't do that on this old hardware so they had to switch things up a bit. But it just seemed like such a middle finger to anyone who supported the Wii U, and I still think that any time a Wii U game gets ported to the Switch. But I understand that, like, it's such an easy cash grab for Nintendo, and a lot of people didn't get to play those games because not anyone, hardly anyone bought a Wii U in the first place. But even when the Switch came out, like, when trying to decide if I wanted the black one or the red and blue one, I went for the black one just because I was so stinking negative towards Nintendo at the time. I was just like, video games are stupid, Nintendo's stupid, and there's never going to be a good Nintendo game ever again. I don't even know why I'm buying this, waste my time and money, I don't want it, I don't care. And I just got it for the heck of it. So, like, I was so stinking angry I got the black one just because I was not into the whole fun aspect anymore. I was just like, video games are stupid and... Nothing good is ever going to get made ever again. All the good games have already been released. I was so stinking angry. So I just got the black one because it was just like the base one. It was just like looked more mature or whatever. E3. <laughs> Thanks, Reggie. But it was just like I was sort of done with it. So I just got the black one because I was just not in a good mood. I was just so angry. It reflected my heart at the time. But after the Switch came out, it became a lot more colorful. And I kind of wish I did get the red and blue one. But, um, I know those are just Joy-Cons, so I could just get new Joy-Cons and I don't have to get a whole new console or whatever, but, um... Something I wanted to say with, um, comparing the Switch to the Wii U. Holding the gamepad after holding the Switch for so long, it's not like switching between a 3DS to a Game Boy Advance or, like, a iPhone 6 to an iPhone 4 or anything like that. I still really love the Wii U gamepad. It feels really comfortable. Like, one of the key elements about it that I loved from the beginning was how light it is. It is really stinking light, despite how stinking huge this thing is. And I like how big it is. It feels, like, sturdy and secure, and that's something that I can't say about the Switch. Uh, well, I guess when you have it, uh, not docked, like, having the tablet on its own, that's all fine and dandy, but, I don't know, the Wii U gamepad still feels more comfortable. It feels good to hold it, and, like, the ridges on the back and everything like that, and how it's all spread out. I honestly, comp I honestly prefer it over the a switch believe it or not and it's still incredibly light it's not exactly easy to store or to uh, take with you but it's still really comfortable if you're just going for a plain at home experience and i know there's like a switch pro, pro controller which is basically like the wii u pro controller so i don't really have any room to complain about how the controller is super tiny even when you use the little uh dog head thing that it comes with but i don't know i just, I feel like the Wii U did everything right from the get-go when it started. It had a really solid launch, but then everything after that was just horrible. Which is sort of funny, like, in comparison... What are Bob and Reggie doing? Um, okay, in comparison to, like, other Nintendo consoles, which have terrible launches with, like, no games to play, and then afterwards things pick up really, really amazingly. But with the Wii U, it was a bit different. It had an amazing launch, and then nothing came out after it. So, and it was sort of the thing with the Switch as well, like, um... It had a really crummy launch, in my opinion, even though Breath of the Wild was, like, critically acclaimed, I wasn't personally interested in it, and that was, like, the only game to play on it, so... Um, I didn't really like the Switch at launch, and it took a while for me to ease into it, and ease into enjoying it, really. 
But then, uh, at this point in time, I am happy that I do have a Switch, and I'm not as cynical towards Nintendo anymore now that they finally dropped their content ID, uh, Rampage, and all that jazz, but... Oh, Wii U, there's so many, like, things I can say about it. It's just, like, a missed opportunity of so many things, like, about marketing and whatnot. I even had, like, a problem with the Wii U and, like, marketing, a marketing problem when setting this up. I'll get into that when we get to the Wii side of things, but... This is another thing that I just adore about the Wii U and the Wii, that the Switch does not even attempt to replicate showmanship. When you start up the Wii U, it has this big old stinking plaza. It has a name. It's called the Wada Wada Plaza, because water is like a Japanese word for like a bunch of talking or whatever. It's like background noise, and it's just like a big group of people talking in the background. It's like a whole plaza of people, and back when internet connection was a thing, your friends would appear in the plaza as well, people who you have on your friends list. Not to mention that the Wii U did not have friend codes, believe it or not. They switched back to friend codes with the Switch, but they didn't have it with the Wii U. I don't understand that at all, but that's another reason, like, the just little uh, bit of music that you hear in the background as well. And the cool thing is, the music you hear on the Wii U on the TV is different from the music you hear in the gamepad. I have it muted right now just for recording purposes, but if I were to higher the volume on this, you hear, like a bit of a different sound and it uh, goes along with the music coming from the TV to make a complete song and I thought that was really stinking cool so there's that which I really enjoy um of course the eShop themes of this generation had like a bunch of different songs on the eShop but like everyone knows the Wii Shop channel song everyone adores it and Me Maker songs everyone stinking loved it it was just like those little tiny details that you really didn't think mattered all that much but it just added flair and personality, and it made this so much more than just putting in a disc and turning the game on. Honestly, when this stuff started becoming more mainstream, I was kind of against it, kind of preferred it was just like back in the old days where you put a disc in and then it starts and it was easy as that, but now I just miss that part of it because I love, I sing and love the plaza and I love all these little icons we can switch over here and see all these different things of like, all the different icons and everything like that. I know the Switch has it as well, but, like, the layout is so much more minimalistic. It goes in the style... I can't blame it entirely on Nintendo, because a lot of other companies do the same thing, where, like, look at logos for, like, certain companies like Yahoo or Google or McDonald's or whatever, and compare, like, old logos to new ones. I don't know why this is, but, like, every company decides that whenever they make new logos, they just need to flatten their, their logo design. And that just seems to be the thing, like, simplify it more and more and more. It, like, it, they start out 3D and it is good looking and it has, like, a, an effect to it. It makes it seem more pop-out-ish. But then, later on, they just flatten it and simplify it. And I don't understand that entirely. I don't know why that's a good thing. But with the Switch, it does that in spades where, like, nothing pops out. It's all just a basic grid. It can't even fit all the stuff onto the screen without, like, having a folder for it. And there is no music at all for the Me Maker, for the main menu, for the shop channel. There is no music. The Me Maker isn't even advertised on the Switch. It's like a side mode in settings. You have to go to settings to make Mii's. And like, are you serious? That doesn't sound fun at all. Like, how would you even find that? And like, it sounds like it's a chore to make a me. Like, oh, we'll go into settings. Like, do the Mii's even get used for anything? I'll have Therese to tell you. Is there any Switch game at this point in time that uses Mii's in them, or is it simply for using them in your icons for uh, people you have on your friends list? I really don't know, but it is really unfortunate that, like, so much personality throughout the Wii and Wii U era, and I know that they were trying to, like, distance themselves from that as far as possible so that people wouldn't confuse the Switch for a Wii or a Wii U again, but there's some things that they should have kept, I feel like. Just the name in general should have been enough to make people know that this wasn't another Wii or a Wii U. I wish they had kept the Miis in like the interface and stuff like that. They, there were so many genius ideas that I wish continued on, but it just didn't. And I really, really am sad about that. Um, yeah, unfortunately, I don't have a Wii sensor bar set up right now. I don't know if like when I'm switched onto this mode, I can never say the word switch again without thinking of the switch. Oh, I can, okay. So only when I'm on this screen, when I switch it over to this screen, then I could use the Pro Controller, but when I, I go back to this one, oh, well, it's not working at all right now, whatever. Um, when I go to this, it doesn't work, or it does? Okay, it wasn't working before. Uh, so when I go over here, I could just show you what 
um, all my stuff is. I know this isn't the Wii Shop channel yet, but like all my Wii data is on the Wii U and I doubt I'm going to make a parallel Wii U Shop channel video in the future, so just want to go down the line and show you everything we have. We have Me Maker. I, eh, I guess I could show this real quick. Um, one thing I really loved about the Me Maker in this game is that they store all the Miis on a shelf, kind of like their action figures. And like you could actually change their poses if you ever go into edit them. When you make it for the first time, it has a base pose like what Bob's in right now. So we got all these different Miis I made over the year and Miis that I got through uh, Street Pass. It, they all look really cool and funny. Like some of them I went with the poses, other ones I didn't really care about. For the Idol Master ones, I like. For Haruka, I just gave her like a base design because she's the basic lady. And uh, Yukio is super sad because she's always afraid and sad and all that jazz. Yayo is happy. Yori's sassy because she's evil. Chihaya is uh, kind of cool and collected. Makoto is super happy because she's the best. Azusa does a kind of a sexy pose. Ritsuko is super angry. Miki is sleepy. And then Ami and Mami are just like monkeys. And Hibiki is uh, proud. And Takane is just what the fruit out there. Uh, here are Mii's that I used for Smash 4. Um, does all these different designs. I, I got really into me making for Smash 4, but not so much with the Wii U version or with the Switch version. Uh, Gino, maybe someday we'll see. But like, you can sort for 3,000 Mii's as well. I think it's only 300 or 100 on the uh, Switch, which is another downgrade. I don't really understand it, but whatever. It is really stinking cool. Okay, I'll openly admit the Wii U had horrible load times. That's one upgrade to the Switch that I very much appreciate. Okay, um, one thing I will give the Mii Maker in the Switch uh, props for is that you get to finally have all the colors of the rainbow when choosing your hair and eye color. It was a very much needed upgrade when you're making certain Mii's that were references to other shows or games or anime or whatever. And I very much appreciate that. It is a very much welcome addition to me making, but again, it's very boring when doing it because there's no music to it and you can't even see your Mii's walk around in a little plaza or be on a shelf or anything like that, so it's kind of bland. Uh, but whatever. Anything else? Uh, settings, Netflix, a lot of streaming services that I like, never use, but I know a lot of people just only use their Wii for this. Like, every time I went online, I just saw my friends being like, Deacon is playing Netflix. I wonder if I can see my friends list on here as well, that'd be kind of cool. Uh, Netflix, YouTube, Amazon, Hulu, uh, Wii Menu, we'll get to that in a bit, maybe. Daily Log, oh, I'm showing you how long you played certain games, I wonder what my most, my most played game is. I wish I still had that information on my Wii, on my original Wii, because it unfortunately broke due to hacking. If you saw my Spongebob LP, you know exactly what I'm referring to, but, um, I, I had, like, I think over 800 hours of, uh, playtime for... Uh, Night's Journey of Dreams, and I wish it still had that. Oh, it's on the game pack. I switch it? Uh, I cannot switch it right now. I wanted to see, like, my most played game. Does it tell you that? It just tells you when you played the console. Okay, I was hoping it would actually tell you. Maybe it is in there, I just couldn't find it? I don't know. Okay, uh, parental controls. Nintendo loves that nowadays. Health and safety information, Wii U chat. Yeah, the stinking Wii U had voice chat and video chat, no less. So scandalous, I know. That, like, would never fly nowadays on the Switch because everything's gotta be all protected. It went out to save the kitties. Uh, we Street U, which is even more scandalous for Nintendo nowadays because it's literally Google Maps. You could. I found my actual stinking house on the stinking map, and, like, you could zoom into it and walk through your stinking street. I went all the way through my sidewalk and like my street all the way up to through the cold cul-de-sac that I used to live in and I found my stinking house that I live in or I used to live in in Connecticut but it is crazy it was so stinking fun to play and just like mess around with it but it was so stinking weird. Wii Sports Club was their attempt at uh, recreating Wii Sports it was like the game itself was free and like you got like demos of all the games but like you had to buy a sports membership kind of like a gym membership so you could play the games for a certain amount of time it was kind of weird i've actually never touched the game before well i touched it like this but i never actually pressed the a button on this icon before and i probably never will 
Amiibo tap, Nintendo's greatest bits, is uh, sort of like the Chronicles in Smash Bros. Brawl, how you can play like demos of certain Nintendo games or old yield timey time Nintendo games. Except you need an Amiibo to make it work. You just tap an Amiibo and it'll give you like a random game or a game like connected to that character's franchise. I'm not entirely sure, but again, never tried it. Probably never will. Uh, Shantae and the Pirate's Curse, which I'm kind of sad that I didn't get the physical version with limited run games, and I never will because it's already gone. Freedom Planet, which I'm surprised hasn't gotten a physical release yet, but that'll probably change when Freedom Planet 2 finally comes out. Um, Mighty Switch Force Hyperdrive Edition, I just, I'm a fan of the Mighty games, I recently finished Mighty Milky Way finally. Uh, I haven't finished this game yet, so I haven't even started Mighty Switch Force 2 yet, so that's a thing. DuckTales Remastered! This was my first ever instance of getting a game digitally and then having it come out physically a few years later and making me really sinking mad because I am all about physical releases. I love having boxes that I could display on the shelf and I only want to buy digital if it's the only option. But in this new era of limited releases of physical games and having no real idea of what games will become physical releases later down the line, I end up buying games multiple times because I am so obsessed with having boxes. It's really stinking annoying. I know it's like a first world problem. I have multiple copies of a video game in my video game collection that's already way too big as it is. Um, Animal Crossing Plaza, which was a really cool thing, like, despite people who always complain about, oh, there's no Animal Crossing game on the Wii U, the Wii U is a failure. Animal Crossing Plaza, I guess I could boot it up real quick. Or real quick for Wii U standards. Wow, it froze. Okay, thank you. That's another thing I liked about the Wii U and like, not it freezing, but um, when you press a game and I know it was more so meant to be a loading screen, but you had like this cool little image and a little song that played while you were waiting. So I l remember playing the Nintendo Land game that came with the Wii U and I love that song that played right when you're going into it. It's, it felt like you were waiting in line to get into Disneyland, how you saw the curtains and you were just waiting for it to start up and it made me excited for a loading screen as weird as that is. Oh, here's here's all my friends and freezing Miiverse service has ended Miiverse and software features that make wait can I can I just hang out though? Can I, can I, uh, okay, I could I could hang out though, right? Okay. Thank you. I thought they were gonna kick me out, but no this was for It was I don't even know what this was for like it involved Miiverse in what, some way I guess it was just like bonding with people over Animal Crossing New Leaf, but you could do it on the Wii U There's nothing you could really do here. You could like Save certain villagers as your favorites. Like I had all my original New Leaf villagers here in the plaza. They were safe so that they never leave. And you could talk to them. You could see Miiverse posts involving that villager. I think that's really all it ever was. So, but it was just like a different type of water water plaza that was exclusively about Animal Crossing and I love it. So uh, I would always just like come in here, like it would be a nice background thing to have, just to have it playing in the background here and all the villagers talk and whatnot. Oh, I love this thing so stinking much. It's making me miss the Wii U, <laughs> as weird as that is. Oh my god. Um, I love Blair so stinking much how she always called me Nutlit. Don't be intimidated by the fact that I'm right here. Go ahead and post about me, Nutlit. Oh, she was my favorite villager. She's always so stinking nice. Mallory was from my, um, City Folk game originally, but then she became the last villager in New Leaf, which I thought was really cool. Um, Walker, who was super adorable, he was always so nice. Pappy is one of my favorites, it would be the guy everybody remembers. Hey! He's my other favorite villager because his catchphrase is, hey. It's thinking amazing. Post about me, pump up those finger muscles, Mush, even though you don't have fingers yourself. Uh, Flurry, the hamster down there, she's so short I can't even, like, lock onto her. But she was another one. Isabel is great, Diva, um, Ed, Wendy, Walt. Oh my god, this is making me miss Animal Crossing and the Wii U. Oh my god, I can't wait for Animal Crossing on the Switch. Oh boy. Uh, I guess we'll head out for now though. Uh, let's close software. I can't believe I'm getting so sick and emotional and like excited about this. I thought this was gonna be like a very quick and bland video, but we're 20 minutes in, we haven't even gotten to the Wii segment yet. Oh my god, I'm loving this so stinking much. Alright, what else do we got? Child of Light, which I've heard is a phenomenal game and is getting a physical reason on the Switch. Great. And it's coming with another game bundled with Valkyrie Hearts, which is a game that I've wanted to play, but I just never got around to it. So, hooray! Another game that I don't have a physical copy of that I could have had because the market is dumb nowadays. Never Alone, Kishima Ingitsuna. Just called Never Alone. It's a short little game. It's kind of cute. It actually has a lot of videos of like, uh, I'm gonna sound really culturally insensitive, but more so, more so just culturally ignorant 
um, the people who made the game and all the stuff, the culture that's based on and whatnot, they're like real life videos of the developers talking about their culture and like the history of like all these characters and their, uh, the weapons, the designs and the legends that are uh, showcased in the game. And it's just like, it seems kind of boring that like you would uh, have just a bunch of history lessons in the game, but no, it's actually really cool and it's optional so you don't have to watch it, but it's cool to see people be pa this passionate about something like uh, turn it into a game. So it was a cool little game. I think it's also on Switch or other things nowadays. Uh, it glitches a lot on Wii U actually, so I'd recommend getting on something else. Citizens of Earth! I'm pretty sure this is made from the same developers as Earthbound, but I never played it. It's, you play as the Vice President of Earth, and you do stuff. I don't really know, I haven't played it. Lost Reavers, it's a free game, so I got it. I think it's like the only free game on Wii U. Um, NES Remix 1 and 2, which eventually got a physical release. Um, their remix versions of NES games were like, Kind of like if NES games had achievements, you have to do, do like certain things in them. That's basically all it is, and people liked it because nostalgia. Dr. Luigi! I stinkin' love me some Dr. Mario, so of course I got Dr. Luigi. Uh, Mario World Mario Advance 2. This was the version I played the- I did the Let's Play on, so... I guess that's the last time I played my Wii U, is when I recorded for the Mario World LP. Uh, Golden Sun, which I haven't played yet, but I know it's a very important game to a lot of people, so I have it right here. Okay, this is sort of a funny story. Mega Man 6, 7, and then a blank spot. I have the first five Mega Man games on uh, Wii for like Virtual Console, and then 9 and 10 were part of WiiWare. They never released Mega Man 8 on any sort of Nintendo console, except for the recent Mega Man Legacy thing on Switch, which is all of the games, but it costs like 60 bucks, and I already have all the games separately, so again, I could have had it physically if I waited a decade. But I would never know that, so I just put this blank space here for Mega Man 8 that will never actually get used because they never put Mega Man 8 on Wii U Virtual Console. But we got 6 and 7 and blank space for 8. Klonoa Empire of Dreams and Klonoa 2 Dream Champ Tournament. Uh, I like Klonoa, I like the Wii one anyway, and I still hope that someday they'll remake the second one. I know they said like... When they were remaking the first one, they said they would remake the second one, uh, Luna Tales Veil, vale, if the first one sold uh, successfully. I think in the first week it sold 7,000 copies. Yeah, so unfortunately that dream is dead and probably any hopes of seeing another Klonoa game again is dead. But we could only hope that they'll re-release the second game. It's on the PS2, like they never released it on PSN store or anything like that. Hope they do one day though. Um, of course we gotta get Earthbound Beginnings and Earthbound, it was more so just to show support even though I already had this on Super Nintendo and I had, uh, the tomato translation remake on Game Boy Advance. Uh, I just wanted to get it to show support and it's just incredible and revolutionizing to say that Earthbound actually came out on the Wii U. I think it's the second most successful, Earthbound is the second most successful, uh, game on the Wii U eShop because like no one ever buys anything anymore so the stats haven't really changed for like the weekly report of most successful Wii U games. I think second place is Earthbound, first place is Brain Age, so that's kind of funny. Mario Party Advance and Mario Party DS. I uh, just sort of got them for the sake of having them. Mario Party Advance, it's garbage. Mario Party DS is actually pretty good. And I never had it on the DS actually. I borrowed it from a friend for one day. I beat the story mode one day and then I gave it back. So I was kind of hesitant. I was like, uh, do I want to get like the physical cartridge or nah. But like the point of playing a Mario Party game is to play with friends and you can't really do that on a stinking handheld without being annoyed as heck, so I just thought it'd be more convenient if it was on the console, though I don't know if you could do multiplayer stuff in this game if it's on the console, I haven't really tried it out before. Uh, Trauma Team on the Wii is the game I've been interested in, the Trauma te uh, Team series for a while, or whatever it's called, the Trauma Center series. I think this is the only one that ever came out on the Virtual Console or on the eShop channel, I don't even know what you call it, because like, there's Virtual Console and then there's just like, games, so I don't really know, but all the other trauma games I have on a uh, Wii as physical boxes and cartridges, but this is like the only one that was like a download thing or like it was an option. I don't know. I just, I have it on Wii. I have it on Wii U here. That's all you need to know, really. And finally, the Pikmin short movies, which was just kind of a cute little side thing. They all look really cool. I can't show them because I think it causes copyright. Don't want to risk it. Um, but yeah, it's just a cool little side thing that I found. Not that I found, whatever, that they had back in the day. It, I got it for free, actually, because they eventually became a reward on Club Nintendo, so I just got them with some points. Uh, 
one of the very few things that I get on Club Nintendo, or my Nintendo nowadays. Uh, I miss Club Nintendo, which we'll get into later. Yeah, there's some other, bunch of other spaces that I haven't gotten to yet. And probably never will. You can still buy stuff on the Wii U, uh, eShop, uh, as far as I'm aware, but other than that, you can't download management? What? Why is it, like, freaking out? Oh, great. Loading screen. I shouldn't have clicked it. Uh, it's... Wanna, like, tell me what's going on? Everything's downloaded. Downloaded. Shantae is still trying to update. Cool. Oh, Half Genie Hero. I guess it stopped because I took it out? Like, Half Genie Hero was the last Wii U game I got. I, uh, when Toys R Us was going out of business, I, uh, just saw that the, uh, Day One Limited Edition was, uh, in their store, and I just got it for the heck of it because, like, it came with an art book and all that jazz, so... I got it. I originally got it when it came out on Amazon, but it just never arrived. So again, the reason why I don't like using Amazon because like I have nothing but bad problems with it. But then I got on Wii U and I was like, oh hey, I'm happy that I got it. I got all the uh, pre-order stuff that I normally would have had to pre-order for. But then it came out on Switch and it was completely pointless. Great. And all the DLC stuff came with it as well. So hooray, again, wasting money and buying games more than once. <sighs> Notifications, is that the thing that will tell me how many, how long I played games? It's probably in the daily log, but I just couldn't find it. Uh, save with January digital deals now. Okay, it's just like literal notifications be like eShop deals. Okay, whatever, I don't care. And how does it take like five, like half a second to X out of it, but then like a million hours to load? I don't know. Internet browser. The internet browser was another cool thing about the Wii U. Oh my god, I just gotta show this off because like those of you who saw my Wii Sports Resort LP, you know about this because it was used as the end slate, but this curtain thing. How on the gamepad you could prepare something on the browser. It's kind of like in the YouTube browser on an iPhone nowadays. How you have the little screen in the bottom right corner. If you're looking up another video, just play in a little screen in the bottom. But you could do that with the Wii U. It did it first where you look on the screen on the gamepad. I unfortunately can't show it to you because I don't have a way to capture that. But um, where you look up stuff on YouTube or on the internet or whatever. And on the top you have this curtain thing that you could do to hide it from people. And so they won't know what it is until it starts. And again, your me pops up and just entertains people while they're waiting. It was a tiny little detail, a nice little flavor bit, but it makes the Wii U memorable and it's cool and I love it. Oh my stinking God, I love it so stinking much. And Bob has like a billion different like tricks and stuff that he could do on the screen. He could play rock, paper, scissors with you and stuff. And he could fall asleep. He could like do juggling. It's really stinking cool. What's he gonna do? He's gonna... Uh, yeah, explain rock, paper, scissors. Let's see if I could do this. All right, buddy, what do you got? I'm gonna go with rock. Oh, we got paper. Oh, he beat me. So it's just fun. When people got into it when uh, they saw this for the first time. Uh, rock again. Yay, I did it. Uh, just like with Tigger's Honey Hunt, when I played that game on Viz Nomadic, I just always choose rock and I always win. And he always just chooses all three of them. So by default, you can know he's doing rock next, but whatever. Uh, you press X to open up the curtain. And, uh, yeah, my favorite bookmarks, Google, YouTube, Nintendo. Uh, then you close it and like, he had all these different colors of curtains and whatnot. And if you hold down the X button while a curtain is up. It did that because why not? The Wii U was awesome. The Wii was awesome. God darn it. I wish the switch had these little flavor bits but they don't. Oh my god, I stinking love the Wii U. Okay, eShop, not gonna go through that. Miiverse, I think it's just gonna be like an error screen and be like, I'm sorry, Miiverse is dead. I guess I could check. I know that Miiverse was like a late integration on the 3DS. I never really did anything with it, but um, I was really into the Miiverse on Wii U. Those of you who remember my Wind Waker LP, I took selfies um, and posted them on Miiverse frequently just to show people where I was in Miiverse has been has ended. That's so sad sounding. Uh, thank you for your interest. Okay, um, but yeah, it was just something I frequently did so people would know where in the game I was up to in terms of recording because I always record stuff early in advance. And then like with my Splatoon LP, I actually uh, hinted at it. I like posted a a teaser shot on Miiverse, and then on Twitter I was just like, I announced my next LP, but it's somewhere on the internet, and you're gonna have to find it. And people actually made it a very avid search to try and find it. And I think uh, Sephiroth1204 and JackieCon were the only ones that were actually able to find the announcement before it got released. So that was really cool. Uh, finally, the friends list. Who did I have on my friends list before uh, Wii U shut down? <laughs> Bees? Oh, my friend. Oh, my God. I like how you could, um, if you have your Switch connected to, like, your Wii U 
like data or like I guess on your mind Nintendo stuff if the both of them are connected to the same thing then um it would see which friends on your 3DS or Wii U friend list already had a switch and connected it as well so you could just add them that way instead of asking them for their friend code which took forever uh but yeah look at all my friends who don't play the Wii U anymore because the Wii U is dead and I'm like the only one who plays it good times right guys Huh. Video games! Well said, John. Well said. But yeah. The Wii U was really stinking cool. But we're not here to talk about the Wii U, even though we're 33 minutes in and I've been doing nothing but talking about the Wii U. We're here to talk about the Wii Shop channel.